Hey everybody, this is Tom with Burmy Bag. So today I'm going to go ahead and set up this little mammoth. I did the final worm separation yesterday and it took a little bit longer than I thought to do that light separation and then to kind of rinse them off and get some of the bugs out of it, uh, those little beetles and those flying bugs, just for I could set this system up just a little bit cleaner. I mean those uh, critters are going to come in here inevitably uh, and they really don't hurt anything but Sometimes they tend to get a little bit out of hand, and that's what was happening right there. So I kind of want to bring them back into check a little bit. So out of the separation yesterday, I got about a pound and three quarters, maybe a little bit over, real close to two pounds of worms. So that's what I'll be starting this system out with. Now, I may do a couple more baiting sessions out of a couple systems I'm trying to close out right now. So I may add a few additional worms uh, later on into the system, maybe get it up to about that two and a half pound mark. But, but for right now, I'm starting just under two pounds. Let's say two pounds, because uh, I will add definitely a few more in here for right now. Now, this little mammoth behind me doesn't have the two inch strap section that I've been adding now. So it's slightly shallower. I, I doubt you'd really notice it. Uh, aesthetics wise you'll see it especially if you have it in a PVC stand because you'll see that big black stripe across the top but in a wood stand here that's kind of hidden anyway by this board so you really don't notice it but the system will be just a couple inches shallower than the one we're setting up here but other than that it's exactly the same as the systems that I'm selling on the website right now and again the huge advantage to this system really is the height I mean, it's really tall, so it's really super easy to harvest. Uh, Capacity-wise, that's part of this video because I'm not really sure what the maximum uh, capacity on worms is on it. I'm sure it's going to be pretty high. I would guess somewhere probably around eight, nine pounds, something like that. It'd probably be the optimum uh, level you could get this thing at if you're running it really well. I'd definitely be starting this thing out at a minimum what I'm doing right now, two pounds. I'd probably start it off with about three pounds of worms to get her going. And as I noted before, the harvest panel on uh, the little mammoth now is made out of a new nylon material, a, a cordura that I found, that's really breathable and it also is permeable, so it'll allow moisture to flow through it pretty easily. So you're never going to have any issues with the bottom of it getting too wet. Uh, if you start getting a moisture buildup in the bottom, it's just going to start dripping out. Uh, the top is a much stiffer cordura, but it breathes really well. Now, one thing I want to explain again, uh, and it really came up because I got a message from somebody yesterday regarding the same subject, and that's transferring worms out of an old system into a new vermibag, whether it be a little mammoth, the max, or a mini, it doesn't really matter. Can you take the contents of your tubs or whatever you're moving them from, your tray systems, and just dump them into the vermibag? Really, I'd say no, don't do that. If you do that, it's going to upset the system. The best way to set up a vermi bag is exactly how I have in the setup procedure. Basically, you layer the bottom with a little bit of paper and stuff just to protect the harvest area for the initial harvest. And then you add your bedding in and your worms and you let that system grow. Now, as you grow, it creates three distinct layers within the vermicompost system, within the vermi bag. The bottom layer is going to be fairly composted, almost finished cast, it's very fine. The middle section is going to be a mixture of food and uncomposted materials, and uh, there'll still be some worms hanging out in that area. And the top section is going to be your uncomposted section, basically your feeding section that you're adding your bedding and your food. And when you take an existing system, especially tubs and trays, because they're, they don't have those distinct layers because they're not deep enough and you take all that material and dump it into here, you create one layer for the full depth of the vermi bag, and you're gonna end up with worms throughout the whole system. You're probably gonna end up with some pretty soggy bottom areas and stuff because the bottom will tend to get really worked over well by the worms, it'll get really fine, it'll get soggy. So the best way to set up a new system, if you buy one and you're transferring from another system into the vermi bag is exactly what I did yesterday on this video and that's do some type of a light separation or just crude it doesn't have to be exact but get most of the worms out of that system and take that along with some bedding and the paper and set how I'm going to set this up today and set your system up like that 
the remaining amount of material that you have, let it run its cycle in a bin off to the side. You can add a little bit into this system from time to time, especially any material that looks like it uh, hasn't been composted yet. But you don't want to be adding well composted material into a new vermi bag as you're setting it up. So, I mean, I'll re-emphasize that. You do not want to be adding well composted material into a vermi bag when you set it up. It'll really mess things up and it'll make it difficult, especially for your first three or four harvests. The system probably will eventually get back into kilter, but your first several harvests are going to be really messed up. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to grab the worms that I pulled out of the tote. I did the separation on yesterday, along with some new bedding and set this up just like I would in the instructions that I include with the bags. Now I include a really good set of instructions on how to set up a new vermi bag. And I, I either email them to you uh, after purchase or include them with the bag normally. But you can also go to my website and on the top menu look under instructions. And you'll find the page there where you can download the setup instructions and also the instructions for building any of the stands uh, for any of the systems. Now, I'd also noted yesterday that I haven't had time to take the little mammoth out of the stand that it's in and build the new one. So this is a stand that I normally set bags in just to make sure everything works well before I send them out. Now in this stand, I actually haven't used the aluminum rods. I actually use wooden dowels. And that's another option for anybody that, you know, you don't have to buy the wooden, uh, or the, excuse me, the aluminum install kit that I have. It looks pretty nice, but this was just half inch wood dowels. I did the exact same method as the aluminum rods. You have to be a little bit careful when you're drilling these holes because it's a half inch. So you really need to put a pilot hole in first because otherwise you'll really tear the wood up. So, but you know, I like the look of the wood dowels as well as the aluminum rods. But, uh, and they're a little bit cheaper per se. You can probably pick these up down at Home Depot for you know, just a dollar or two. Now, on this bag also, I have the center supports are elevated, which I don't like. Uh, on the new bag that, or the new stand that I make, I'll put them down lower. But what's important to note on the Little Mammoth is that the center supports have to be about an inch and a half taller than the side supports. So, and the reason for that is the straps are all the same length in order to accommodate a PVC stand if you want it. So. The best way to do that is when you drill your side pieces here, make sure you drill them two inches down. If you drill these two inches down, then you'll be able to bring these down to flush and then go ahead and put your uh, rods in them. So let me grab the worms that we got yesterday and we'll get this set up, put some paper in here and get the worms into their new home. So the first thing you want to do, and this is with any vermi bag, is to place a couple wet newspapers or some type of paper on the bottom. I don't happen to have any newspaper right now, but I have some uh, brown paper sacks that I had from the grocery store, so I wetted those down really good. And, and it isn't important on exactly what type of paper you put on it, whatever you happen to have. But it's important to put a several layers, a couple layers anyway, on the bottom here. And what you're trying to do is just keep the worms out of this harvest panel initially. There's nothing down there, and it doesn't really matter if they go down there. But, uh, and by the time you do your first harvest, this paper will be pretty well disintegrated. It might still be sitting there pretty good, but uh, you can easily just pull it off. And if you want to throw the remnants of the paper back in the system, you can. So it's a pretty straightforward process to set up a new vermi bag. Um, we'll go ahead and watch this over the next week or so and see how it progresses. Like I said, I may add a few more worms into the system and I'll kind of keep track of uh, 
you know, what kind of poundage I'm adding to the system. Then over the next couple months, hopefully we'll get an idea of what kind of capacity this system has. Uh, it's going to take a little while because I'm starting off with a fairly small amount of worms, but that'd be somewhat typical of what a person would do uh, normal anyway. Two and a half, three pounds of worms would probably be a good starting point, like I said, for this system. When we get this thing up around the eight pounds uh, of worms in here, I'll be really curious myself on you know, what kind of volume of material and scraps and stuff that this thing will handle. I actually think it's going to surprise me uh, is again it does have a very large square footage at the top of the system so uh, it has a large working area per se for the worms once you have the system up about three quarters full. So I'll try and do a weekly video on this now and keep you guys updated on how this thing progresses as the worm population grows. I'll try and keep a constant supply of food in the system and again we'll watch it over the next few weeks, few months, and see how everything goes. This is Tom from Burmy Bag. Till next time, ciao.